Hello dear chess friends, I'm international master Andrei Ostrovsky and you're welcome to the next lesson. This time it is dedicated to the basic checkmate in parents. So a mate in parent is a typical situation in which one of the sides delivers a checkmate. So the more patterns you learn and remember, the easier it is for you to find checkmates over the board. So actually, it is very, very useful activity to learn and memorize mating patterns. Good news is that actually the more tactical exercises you solve, the more patterns stay in your memory without much effort from your side. Nevertheless, there are some basic ones worth uh, simply memorizing from the very start that we are going to discuss today. And we start with the one which is very popular among beginners. So the one which is based on the weakness of the back rank. So in this given position, white plays rook to e8, check. Well, to eliminate this attacking piece, uh, black takes the rook, but there is another rook to take on the eight. And this check appears a checkmate because there is no piece being able to cover the king from this rook's check. At the same time, we can see a great drawback in black's position. All the pawns occupy uh, 7th rank, actually blockading the own king and preventing it from going to the 7th rank so that there is no squares possible to occupy with the king and it is a checkmate. So, to remember the pattern you just need to understand the main drawback. It is the weakness of the back rank. It is the specific placement of the pawns. So all pawns occupy the seventh rank on adjacent squares to the king. Uh, pay attention that in white's king's position, there is no such drawback because the pawn is already on h3, so that king h2 is possible in case of check. And another thing is that the heavy piece occupies the back rank with check. So it uh, could be not only the rook, it might be the queen. And in the initial position, it also can be not the rook's move to the back rank. It can be the queen's move and so on. There are a lot of different possibilities to deliver such a mate. So you have to understand general things. So in each and every pattern, you have to focus on general things. So ask yourself a question, why checkmate is possible here? And what causes this checkmate in the sense of the power of your pieces and in the sense of the bad placement of opponent's pieces. So let's go on. This one is also very, very common. So we can see that white attacks on the king's side and makes the move queen to h6. So after this move, we can see that white creates a thread of queen g7 checkmate. Why? Because uh, f6 pawn protects this square so that queen will be protected and uh, black skin won't have a chance to capture the queen. And after appearing on g7, the queen will control all possible squares where the king could have gone. And we can notice that despite there is no check, and well, queen h6 is not like a typical crushing move and so on. Still, black simply has no defense. So in such a situation, only the piece somewhere covering g7 square could have helped. But in this situation, it's not possible to do. So every move leads to checkmate next move, except for probably queen takes g2. But queen takes g2 makes no sense because king simply takes the queen and black still has no defense. So let's say queen goes to b2, trying to capture f6 pawn, but queen goes to g7 with a checkmate. So queen is placed right in front of the king, supported by the pawn. Instead of the pawn, it could be the bishop, for example, also very common situation. And well, this queen simply controls all possible squares where the king could have moved. So, for example, f7 and h7 pawns are not necessary to complete this pattern, so they could be absent as well. Let's go on. This one is very typical for the situation when there are attacks on different flanks, different sides. So if one of the files is open against the king, uh, there is a typical situation when two heavy pieces are working in the tandem. So here they are the rook and the queen. 
they both occupy the h file which is open and a very common checkmate after queen h8 so queen occupies the back rank once again we can see that there is no possibility for the king to escape because there are pawns on the seventh rank and the queen now controls the back rank and this queen is as we can see supported by the rook so protected by the rook and this means that black simply can't capture it it is a checkmate let's go further Another typical and common square where the queen goes and checkmates the pawn scheme is the h7. So here queen takes an h7 as well and it is a checkmate because the queen is supported by the knight so it is not possible to capture the queen and we can notice that again f7 square is engaged by the pawn, f8 square is engaged, g7 is engaged. So it is a typical checkmate so the king has no squares to go away. By the way, the queen could have been protected not only by the knight, it is also common when it is protected by the bishop or by the rook. Also placed on the h file, uh, sometimes there is a pawn on g6 protecting the queen and it is also a checkmate. Let's go further. This one is very typical when one of the sides manages to occupy the seventh rank with two heavy pieces. In this particular case, we have two rooks and it is very common situation for exactly this sort of endgame so when all four rooks are still on the board so rook takes on g7 first uh, forcing the king to the corner of the board only move then rook takes on h7 grabbing another pawn so even if uh, there is no checkmate it is also very very uh, good achievement just to grab two pawns uh, gaining 10 p so uh, giving black no chances to create a counterplay but in this particular case, there is also a checkmate after king g8. So another rook joins the first one in the attack and goes to g7. And this appears a checkmate already because, well, both rooks control the seventh rank. So these squares are all controlled. It's not possible to occupy them with the king. The one on h7 controls h8 as well. And f8 square is engaged with the own rook. So it could be also the knight placed on f8. So it's not necessarily both rooks attacking through the seventh rank. As I said before, it could be two heavy pieces of different kinds. So the queen and the rook, for example, or two queens. Sometimes it is also possible. So the point is to have two active heavy pieces on the seventh and f8 square is engaged. So the king is checkmated. And now we get to the tandem of the rook and the bishop, also very common. So uh, rook goes to g7 with check here, king goes to h8, it is the only move. And now a very, very typical method of delivering a checkmate, a very typical method of attack, a crushing attack, so discovered check. So rook takes on g6 and it is a check from the bishop to the king. And uh, here it is decisive because we can see that rook controls the g file so that the king can't move. So the only defense against this check is rook f6, but now the bishop takes on f6. There is no longer a defense possible against this check. So the king is completely smothered and betrayed by the own pawn. So as you can see in the majority of patterns, there are some own pieces actually limiting the king. So that helping the attacking side to deliver a checkmate. So in this particular case, it is the pawn on h7 that engages the square, which could have been occupied, which could have been used by the king to escape. But okay, here it is not possible. Checkmate. Let's go on. And one more involving the bishop, this time accompanied by the knight. Also very typical situation not only for the end game stage but mainly for middle game stage so when the position of the king is weakened this way so the squares that the bishop controls are weakened and can't be covered by other bishop let's say so this sort of checkmate in pattern is possible so the knight should go away because the bishop as we can see at the moment is limited with the knight and it's possible to do with the tempo and another very typical and very efficient way of delivering a checkmate or at least uh, creating enormously dangerous threats is the double check so the knight can go to f7 with the double check 
so the check from the knight and at the same time from the bishop so against this sort of check the defendant side has only one defense so the king goes away and then knight goes to h6 it is a check and now it is a checkmate so the knight attacks the king and controls f7 square f8 square and h7 square are engaged with own pieces and the bishop controls dark squares so all the squares around the king are controlled and well against the knight's check there is only one defense to go away here the king can't go away so that it is a checkmate by the way it is not the only way to deliver a checkmate in this position another way is to take the g6 pawn also a double check giving black no chances but to go to g8 after which knight jumps to e7 again the same checkmate so check the bishop controls this g7 h8 square and uh, other squares are engaged with own pieces so that it is a checkmate and the last one for this portion of patterns features the tandem of the rook and the knight also a very common attacking tandem so as we can see the rook is very active on the seventh rank the seventh rank is not normally defended by black pieces and the knight is very close to the king as well so everything starts with the check on c6 which forces the king to the corner of the board and now rook captures on a7 as we can see the rook is protected by the knight so the rook is invulnerable and the knight at the same time controls uh, b8 square while the rook attacks the king and controls b7 square so that uh, b7 square and b8 square are not possible to occupy as well as a7 square so the king is checkmated and now there is a question what all these patterns do have in common so actually we noticed that the active side tried to make as more checks as possible because check is usually a very efficient method of uh, delivering the attack not only the checkmate so at least the attack so you should remember discovered checks double checks are usually very very efficient methods and also you have to understand that to deliver the checkmate all your pieces should be not only active not only very close to opponent's skin but also well coordinated right so they should work together so i wish you good luck in solving the proper exercises thanks a lot for your attention see you next lessons